Hi, I'm Anna Lisa. I'm Maggie. And I'm Nicole. And this is Unconditional, the podcast. Let's do this. Uh, today, we're going to talk about values-based goals. And I love this topic uh, because it's, it's a common theme that I bring up with my clients. Um, I, I think exploring our own values is something that we have to do if we're going to get to that, like, that state of like mental and emotional well-being and equilibrium. We have to know our values. We have to be able to talk to other people about them. But it's extremely rare for anyone who's not a therapist to say, oh, well, it's my, here are my values or tell me about your values. Like that's just not a typical topic of conversation for other people. No, yeah, like I feel like every counselor, therapist, psychologist, like anybody in the mental health field could tell you probably like their top 10 or their top five, because we've all talked about it at some point. Um, but like, yeah, normally if I ask in session, I get like wide eyes and like asking for a word bank. Cause it's something that we don't necessarily, we think about, but we don't realize we're thinking about it. And like, we live by our values without recognizing which value is being like walked through. Um, so it's definitely uh, something that is important, but isn't always like talked about like straight up. Well, if someone is coming in with a, a problem that they're trying to resolve and they're explaining that they're spending a lot of their time, you know, focused in one particular area of their life, Right. Say they're they they tell me that what matters to them is fun, relaxation, adventure. Right. They want to buy concert tickets and they want to, you know, like spend time camping with their family. Uh, but what they're actually doing is working 10 to 12 hours a day, six days a week. Right. So there's a disconnect between their stated values and their actions, the way they're living their life. And so of course you're going to be unhappy when you have that kind of disconnect or what we say in therapy speak incongruence. Um, but if, if you can take the time to identify, these are actually the principles, the standards of living that matter to me. And I'm going to make time now for those things, then you, you will actually be mentally and emotionally much more, you know, in balance, much more, much happier values are are fluid right like they're not set in stone like and just stays the same throughout life it can change for a variety of different reasons uh i you know i, I think of maybe early in a career you value your job more than you know maybe like travel or other you know other things and then as you get older and you feel more established that be, might be still a priority and a value but it drops in that list and maybe then you're prioritizing spending time with others or go back to traveling apparently that's what i've been thinking about today um and maybe that's one of my values it can be really challenging when your values, you know, let's say your values are, are travel and adventure and, and it, that hasn't changed, but perhaps your life circumstances have changed and it's not accessible to you anymore. Um, or maybe because of a cultural issue, like mm -hmm. the thing that you value isn't available to you in an obvious way, right? So do you change your values? Well, that it doesn't work that way, right? <laughs> you don't just change your <laughs> values. Um, you've got to figure out a way to still honor that value within the circumstances that you're stuck in, right? Or change your circumstances. Sometimes that's possible too. Yeah. What I'm, I'm hearing is that our values change obviously over the course of our lives, especially from when we are young, young children to compared to when we are adults. Right. Um, but I'm also hearing that it's important to keep in mind that these goals that we set for ourselves don't have to be, you know, moving major mountains. If they are small, um, you know, increments and achievable goals. 
It's also reminding me like of something that I say to a lot of clients and non-clients, like people in my life, um, of like, you want your, like your habits to fit your lifestyle and not force your lifestyle to fit the habit. Um, and the same thing goes with goals that are values based, right? You don't want to have to shift your values in order to make the goal, right? If I value sleep, right, and like taking care of myself in that way, right, getting well, like rest and 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 taking care of myself by by sleeping. I'm not going to make a goal to wake up at 4 35 o'clock to go and work out or do anything, right? Like that would be going completely against not only my lifestyle, but my value. Um, and so thinking about what values you hold, whether that comes from family, culture, society, wherever, like religion, spirituality, all of these things can bring on values, experience. Um, regardless, you want to make sure that the goals that you're setting align with them, but also make sense for where you're at, right? You might want to value something or feel like you need to value something, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you are living that or that you should. Right. And so your value, your, your goals should reflect that. Is that a main element that you guys see as counselors in the session where um, people feel like they need to be comparing themselves to others? Is there like a crowd mentality when it comes to setting your values? Yeah, I, rather than speaking about client experiences, I'll talk about my own experience. So I, I own a business, right? I'm an aspiring entrepreneur and author. And there you do? Are, I do. <laughs> Um, so, and there's a million articles out there that tell me what I should do, right? You know, in, in America, our culture, we, we love this whole concept of, you know, working for ourselves, pulling ourselves up by our bootstraps. And, and there's so many um, articles telling me what should and shouldn't happen. So I should belong to the 5 a.m. club. But just like Nicole said a minute ago, I value rest. I value sleep. And I know that I cannot be an effective counselor if I'm short on sleep. It's so that's like the number one above anything else. I know I need to hydrate. I know I need to eat, but sleep is the, one of those key elements. And yet as an entrepreneur, I'm supposed to wake up at 5 a.m. and answer my email or whatever it is they do, <laughs> right? So there's this incongruence between what I'm taught by my culture and, and what I know is actually going to work for me. Yeah, and I, I've definitely seen a lot of, challenges and struggle around values similar to like what you know Lisa was saying from either a society uh, or you know a cultural background or family right like a lot of times it's you know oh like I was brought up in like a way where blank right you know that you prioritized work or you prioritized family overall or those kinds of things and also, the idea of, you know, values from a gender perspective or from sexual orientation perspective, like all of those pieces come together and can cause that incongruence or that disconnect because, okay, I feel as a, you know, as a woman, I should be doing this based off of what I've been told or how I was brought up or what I've seen. And that's not where I align, you know, right? Like there's certain things that I would like to do that might not necessarily fit that mold that I'm used to. And so that exploration of values and what your true authentic values are does come up a lot in counseling. And it might not come up of like, hey, let's talk about goals today or values today, right? Like it might look like, I'm seeing a disconnect between what you're saying and how, like, you know, what we've talked about with how you were brought up. And I'm wondering if that's causing a bit of friction um, or, you know, uh, an obstacle to get to that goal um, and, and kind of moving on from there. But it can definitely 
bring a lot of struggle, a lot of second guessing, a lot of anxiety, fear, frustration, like a lot of, of things can come up around values. Um, and and it, for that very reason, um, for sure. Yeah, that really answers my question, especially looking at it from my perspective, I am, you know, in my mid twenties and looking every time I pull up my Instagram, someone is newly engaged or someone's buying a house or, you know, someone's having a child, which are all amazing things. And here I am single living at home, but it makes sense now how you've explained it because those are just not my, my prioritized values at this point in my life. Well, that's a great point too, like especially what you were just describing of comparison or like that, like seeing in other people's like, you know, corners of, of life, you know, things that we quote unquote should be valuing or, you know, need to in order to, to thrive or move forward or be successful, right? Like, um, if it doesn't align with your values, then no, you're not going to be attracted to doing that. And it also doesn't make you a, a lesser person or less successful or, you know, anything of that nature because you're not following it, right? Like, like you said, all of those things are great, but also if they're not your jam, you don't have to do, if you like jelly rather than jam, go for the jelly, right? Like just don't, you don't have to do it. Feeling anxious, stressed, or overwhelmed? Join local Montgomery County author and animal assisted therapist, Annalisa Smithson for a 21 day journey of compassionate, playful self-discovery. Readers will relish this timely, easy to digest pilgrimage of self-love which Smithson offers through 21 snack-sized chapters that can be easily digested before breakfast. Unconditional Learning to Love Your Authentic Self is available now on Amazon in ebook, paperback, and hardback versions. Get your copy today. Go to AnnaliseSmithson.com for more information or find Unconditional on Amazon. First, I want to say that I prefer marmalade, um, but I want to add that you you don't have to be all or nothing with honoring your values, right? So I, I love animals, right? Animals in nature are high on my list of things I value. And so I, I spend as much time as I can outside. I spend as much time as I can caring for my animals. I don't eat meat, but you know what? I actually do own some leather purses. so. Uh, if if a vegan is listening, I'm sorry. <laughs> I still value animals. I still value how you know how they're treated, ethical treatment of them, and all of that. Um, but like I, I'm not perfect, right? And that's okay. And there's that's probably kind of a cheeky example, but you know, I also honor my family, right? I, I love spending time with my kid. You know, I love spending quality time with my partner. And there's going to be plenty of Friday nights where you find me out with my girlfriends (laughs) because I can't be all or nothing with my family. That's a great example, right? Like, because I I think of like my own values, I value connection and I value the relationships I have in life. I also value my own time, right? Like being in solitude for a little bit. I am an introverted heart and I need that recharging time doesn't mean that I no longer value having connections or relationship or spending quality time with others. It's just in that moment, that's not where I'm at. Right. Like, and that also speaks to that, like continuum, right. Of, okay, maybe today I am shifting a little bit and I'm recognizing I need to prioritize one value a little bit more 
than another, right? I think of a classic example of if anything has happened, you know, in your family that like, you know, a lot of times people come together, right? Or are showing support, but that we are not always sitting in the same room all the time. I mean, there's a lot of reasons why that's not happening probably, but uh, like, you know, like it's just like a lot, um, you know, to be in everyone's space all the time. And maybe that's the introvert in me talking, but like there, those things are going to shift. Um, and that can be by the hour or by the day, by, you know, the week, um, you know, I, I think for myself, I'm taking time off, right? Taking time off is prioritizing or value my value of taking time to be just by myself or be me, right? And do have connections with my loved ones. Um, does not mean that I value my job, my clients, uh, or anything else that I would be doing during the work week any less. It's just next week, some of my peeps are going to float up the values chart for me. So it can, I, it, it's, there's no question that it can be difficult when you're naming and identifying your values, right? It's kind of like the Apple core game where you you, you know, struggle to compliment yourself, kind of go hand in hand. So from your standpoint, when you work with clients on identifying goals, are there any like simple um, value identification activities that our listeners can do on their own time, possibly, you know, at home? Yeah, the easiest thing to do is to pull up a list of values you can Google it and find 20, 50, 100 different examples of what values are. And you just start marking off the ones that you like. In fact, I have a worksheet of this um, on my website, AnnaliseSmithson.com slash tools. And if you haven't bought the book, now you know the secret link uh, to get the tools for the book. Um, but there's a worksheet in there that has a list of values and you, you literally just read each one and you mark off if it, if it's important to you. And then if you have a list of 20, then you have to start narrowing it down. You have to start thinking, okay, these things matter to me, but what matters the most? And the, the classic way that we do this in the counseling room is that we say, okay, put it in order from one to 10. Number one is the most important value. That's probably your core value, right? Most people pick things like love, peace, or joy as their core value. And then, you know, usually things like family, prosperity, you know, whatever else sort of comes next. Hopefully relaxation is one of the things, or your health, hopefully mental health is <laughs> near the top of your list. Uh, you can also just do a little introspection, a little journaling about what do you spend the majority of your time doing? And not only what are you doing, but what are the things that make you happy? When do you feel comfortable, at ease, like you're, you're in your zone, you're doing what's really good for your soul, right? That's probably pointing you at your values. I was going to say, Nicole, from like a, from an art therapy standpoint, are there any, you know, activities oh. there? Yeah, so I have done, uh, it's like a collage of the things that, you know, like, like Lisa was saying, uh, instead of listing it, right, like drawing it out. Um, I've done, like, you know, like things where, you know, you have your little brain bubble, right, and on top of that are all the things that, that are who you are right, like, what do you value, what are the things that bring you joy. What are the things that spark spark joy? Um, so you're Marie Kondo in your mind, really. Uh, no, um, but anyway. So, uh, but it there is a way of of really looking at it more from a creative standpoint with either drawing it out or. Um, I've done little like landscapes of I love I love a good landscape. Okay. Um, if anyone wants to know that about me and what on that landscape, you're drawing things that symbolize your values, right? So if you uh, value your family, maybe you have a, a house or a circle of chairs or, uh, or something like that, right? A circle, um, whatever, like maybe your family has something 
that like you guys all agree on and write and draw that. Um, if you value music, if you value um, travel, if you value school or, you know, whatever, right? And drawing symbols of that. Uh, it gives you an, a, a chance, especially in like the counseling room. Okay, well, I see that you put this symbol. What does it mean? Right. And so from that, as you're explaining it, it's showing like why that value is so important to you. Why was it the forefront of your mind? Um, you know, because like most of the time what happens is, you know, knee jerk reaction. We think of a couple of things that are very important to us. And then you start to struggle after a while. Right. Cause those are the things you might not think of all the time. Right. Like I, I value, um, I value caffeine, but I don't tell myself that my value is coffee. Right. Like I just drink it. Uh, <laughs> I know that I value sunshine, but I don't think about it until I look out the window and it's there. Um, or it's really dreary out and I wish it was. Um, but if it's a sunny day, I might not draw that. Right. Like, cause I'm not thinking about it. It's already there. Um, and that's also something that can be ex like talked about. Okay. Here are all the symbols that you talked, you put here. Let's look at a list of values. Let's align some of those. Are there any in that list that you forgot or you hadn't thought about, but you really do value? And why might that be? Is it being met? Do you feel like you're living towards that value already? Or is it something that maybe you felt that you valued and you don't as much as, as you thought, right? Like it does, it brings on a lot more of that exploration. You don't have to be an artist. Stick figures and stickers will do the trick for you. There, there's different ways to explore that feel comfortable for the person who's exploring, right? So, you know, if it that is stickers and a stick figure and a like, you know, that's great. If it's writing it out, awesome. If it's like verbalizing it, cool. Uh, just to get your your mind thinking about it is it, really the main main focus. Um, and so then that like brings you now that you've got your foundation, how does that fit into what you're trying to work on? Okay. So our takeaway today for our listeners is to think about a goal that you've been working really hard on recently and kind of do a little self-assessment and Consider whether or not that goal you're putting so much of yourself into, uh, how well does it fit your values? Which of your values does it fit into? Um, and if it doesn't, you know, maybe explore why that is and see if there's a, a different approach you could take to still get to a similar goal. So that's it for today. Thanks for listening, everybody. Um, we, we will pick back up where we left off, not next week, but the following week, because Nicole is practicing self-care next week and it's taking time off so good for her we'll miss you but it's well deserved and uh we will be back <laughs>